happy shiny puppies, it's Melody. And today I wanna to talk to you about the subject of bullying, particularly if you are being bullied, or if you know someone who's being bullied, or possibly even if you have been guilty of bullying yourself. Um, I wanna bring a little bit more understanding to the subject, shine some light on it, and hopefully also give a little bit of advice. So what, what causes bullying? What's actually going on there when somebody is getting bullied from an energy point of view? Well, I'm sure that you've read that bullies are incredibly insecure people that victims uh, victimize, you know, and sort of the chain of pain continues. And that is all true. Yeah, bullies are just as powerless feeling as their victims. Yeah, um, they're actually two sides of the same coin. They're both stuck in uh, a part of the spectrum of empowerment, uh, which is a term from my book. Uh, if you don't know what it is, you might wanna go grab it. Um, but basically, we go from incredibly powerless to fully empowered, and somewhere on that spectrum. And the lower part of the spectrum is a part where we get manipulative behavior and people who are manipulatable. And they're actually both in the same section, it's just one is a little bit lower on the spectrum, one is a little bit higher on the spectrum, um, but both of them feel powerless. And so when people manipulate, bullying is a form of manipulation, when people manipulate, they um, try to gain a little bit more power by overpowering somebody else or getting them to do something for them that they don't wanna do. It can be subtle and it can be really blatant. It can even get physical, yeah? Um, and yet the victim of that is somebody who is in their fear for whatever reason, you know, insert reasons here, they are infinite, but for whatever reason in their powerlessness, willing to cater to that kind of energy, which is what draws it to them. So. The victim of bullying is generally not very good at setting boundaries, uh, is often victim of manipulation in different ways from different people in their lives. Some of them may be uh, worse, some of them may be better. Um, you can chalk it down to bad self-esteem, but bad self-esteem is usually a result of the powerlessness, not the cause of it. So both the perpetrator and the victim are sort of in the same section of the spectrum uh, of empowerment. And what that means is that both of them are absolutely trying to gain their power, one by withdrawing, withdrawing from the threat, and the other one by trying to overpower. Um, and this might be a little bit, you know, surprising to you, but by trying to overpower the threat, you know? Because oftentimes, the bully picks on somebody that they find threatening, not generally physically threatening, but possibly ideologically threatening in some way. That person represents something to them that feels threatening. And it can be as simple as this. Somebody who feels like they have more freedom than you to be who they are. Because a lot of the time, this is why people pick on people who are different, yeah? Because we're all different, we're all weird. Let's just get that out of the way right away. We are all huge, giant fucking weirdos. But a lot of us won't allow ourselves to own that. So we try to hide it because we think if the world sees just how weird we are, the world will reject us and come after us with pitchforks, yeah? But some of us can't hide it all that well. It sort of squishes out from an early age. And so the way I like to think about this is it's like we're in a black and white world and everybody's got all this color inside them. And some of us, this, the color just sort of squishes out a little bit, yeah? And, um, and those who are trying to suppress their own colorfulness, yeah? Their own inner rainbow, if you will. Um, those who are only trying to suppress their own colorfulness, they will come and they will try to shut down your color because if you know if you let yours out then maybe they have to let theirs out and that is the biggest threat of all and it's a lot easier to shut you down and people are going to do that in a variety of ways bullies show up in all forms some of them are just passive aggressive some of them are you know uh, very subtle about it some of them are not subtle at all like i said and then it you know goes all the way to being physical um and so your boss might bully you because you're creative 
and you do things differently and he wishes that he could be creative too uh, but he doesn't allow himself and so all now that rage gets directed at you and he's got to shut that down because he's got to shut the possibility of creativity down because he doesn't have to feel so bad about squashing it with himself so how do we step out of this cycle? Well, it's all about finding our power. It's all about stepping into our power. And that's what all of this is about, is about moving up on the spectrum of empowerment. Of course, you know, somebody trying to squash you so that they can feel a little bit more powerful is really about them squashing you so they don't have to feel as powerless because whatever you represent, if you're being bullied, is what's actually threatening them, which is making them aware of their powerlessness. This is not actually creating any real power. This is an attempt at gaining power, but it doesn't actually work. So we're not talking about true power, we're talking about a false sense of power. And if you look around in our world, there's a lot of that going on. Even on a national level, you know, countries bullying other countries and, uh, and having to sort of make a big show of how strong we are and, and, and threatening other people. This is not true power. This is a false sense of power coming from an absolute sense of powerlessness. But how do you stand up against somebody bullying you? Well, again, it is all about stepping into your power, and I gotta say this, and not a lot of people say this, but I'm gonna say it, yeah? Even though I don't condone violence on any level, not gonna choose violence if there's any other choice, and there usually is, sometimes the only way to step into your power is to fight back which means that you might have to have a verbal fight, which means that you might have to have um, a legal fight. You might have to sue somebody or you might have to even punch back. So the way that I see that is if you're, you know, um, in the corner, you've been backed into a corner and you're already, you know, on your knees and somebody is just wailing on you, at some point it might be necessary to at least deliver one well-placed punch back so that you can get away from them or um, stop them. Having said that, yeah, I would always recommend that you step into your power first before you make any decision on whether or not you need to fight, on whether or not you need to file that lawsuit or have the confrontation with the boss or punch somebody, yeah? Um, and if you're being physically threatened, this sort of need to sometimes step into your power by fighting back is really the only time that that's, you know, gonna be really sort of warranted. I'm not talking about taking revenge. I'm not talking about chasing somebody down and continuing to punch them. Um, but I'm talking about defending yourself. And so this is the fighting back that I'm talking about. And so if that's what's required to step into your power, which it sometimes is, not always and less often than you might think, but sometimes it is. Um, even then, I would, I would say step into your power as much as you can before having to take that final act because a lot of times what happens is that you find out that you no longer need to take that final act. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about doing it in your mind first because in your mind there are no consequences and you can take it as far as you need to in order to get to that place of empowerment and satisfaction. So what you wanna do is you want to um, fight it out in your mind, have the big blow up conversation, hurl every insult, every epithet, you know, punch the crap out of somebody. You can even kill them, resurrect them and kill them again. There are no consequences what you can do in your mind as long as you are feeling that satisfaction of that anger coming out and of you moving into your empowerment. You can also do things like take a martial arts class. So if somebody is physically threatening you, it might really help you feel more empowered if you do feel like you can defend yourself and if you can defend yourself. So you take that martial arts class or you draft the lawsuit. You go talk to a lawyer, you find out what your rights are. Often, these kinds of things will be enough. So the kid who's taken the martial arts class might never, ever, ever have to end up using martial arts in a fight because he's now got a different energy and the kids no longer threaten him or her, yeah? Um, you draft that lawsuit, you get into a power, in, into a place of, I am right, and I am in the right, and this guy's got nothing on me, and you might very well feel that you don't actually even have to file the lawsuit anymore, and you don't even really feel like it. 
So when you've shifted your energy and you're back in your power, you know that you've got it when you don't feel threatened anymore. When that person has no power over you, when you just maybe kind of even feel a little bit sorry for them, you know. So I hope that I've explained at least a little bit in a rudimentary way what bullying is about and what is necessary in order for us to move out of bullying because honestly when we all feel more empowered there will be no more bullies and there will be no more victims of bullies. Both of those sort of paradigms, archetypes will be shifted out. The bottom line basically is it's all about empowerment. Because when you're empowered, you don't get bullied and you don't feel the need to bully anyone else. So everything that you can do to get more empowered, to feel more empowered, truly empowered, not false sense of power, is going to uh, help you shift out of those kinds of situations and not have to experience them ever, ever again. So. I hope that I've been able to bring a little bit of clarity and maybe some soothing to the subject of bullying. I will see you next week. And until then, thank you for bringing your light to the world. <laughs>